get started I'm going to read verbatim because I know I won't remember anything. I'd like to say a few things. First of all, Terry and I, even after the climb, is absolutely thrilled and honored to be a part of this occasion. I've known Jeremy since he was born. I've always admitted that Jeremy uh, was my favorite nephew. His mom made mention of this once and without hesitation I let her know, unequivocally, he is. But, as I told her, because I am the uncle and not his father, I am allowed this privilege. But with that said, I will always believe that in love and discipline, you show no favoritism. The Bible tells us you understand person in judgment. Because right is right and wrong is wrong. I know that I've always done that uh, in my life. In the summer of 72, Jeremy wasn't quite true yet. I started a bond with Jeremy. That was only strengthened to this day. For the last 20 plus years, Jeremy and I have prayed that God would give Jeremy a mate, that God, that has God in her life and would be committed to him. If you have God in your life, there are only two things that will make this relationship successful. And love, uh, God love, but mankind love is not one of them. Many relationships with love have failed. However, you have to have some kind of love to begin in that relationship. But the two things you must have are commitment and God has to be the forefront of your life. You cannot enter this relationship wanting the other to change. Today, right now, is the person you must commit to. If you are committed and the Lord is the forefront, some changes will automatically happen. But not all things. That's why you must have God in the forefront. Because God will make a change in you, not knowing it, by giving you the strength needed to deal with the things that the other person will never ever change. Paul asked for change, asked for something in his life three times. And the Lord told him that my grace is sufficient. And sometimes it's just sufficient that God gives you the grace to go through the things that you want to go through. So he won't change everything. Jeremy will always be a man. Allison will always be a woman. Now don't make these things a bad thing. A lot of people say man this, women this. That's not the right way to be things. And you're two different people. So you're always going to have two different ideas about how some things are going to be done. I have six words to help both of you with this dilemma. And not to be mean. Grow up and deal with it. That is the words I heard back when I was probably 19 years old from an old guy that was married 50 something years. And he says, I can tell everybody how they have a successful marriage. Grow up. So I added to this. Jeremy and Allison, keep God in your forefront. Stay committed. Couple that pray together, pray together. We are gathered in this beautiful place in the presence of God to join together this man and this woman in marriage. But only commitment in God will make it successful. Their love and intention has created this marriage. And we gather here today to join in the celebration and acknowledgement of that bonding. Jeremy, the marital responsibility of the husband is to love your wife. The Greek word, render, love, it denotes this willing, sacrificial giving of the hunt on the husband's part. 
for the benefit of his wife throughout the heart of his time, as Christ gave himself for the church. So there is to be no sacrifice, not even the laying down of his wife, a husband should not be willing to make to his wife. Wife, submit yourself unto your husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wife be to your husband in everything. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, and this charity is not charity as we hear in the world, it is God's love. I am become a sounding brass or a gentleman singer. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all knowledge, and so all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am not. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, I have nothing. Charity suffers long in its time. Charity can not. Charity wanteth not itself, it is not kept up. Does not behave itself unseemly, does not her own, is not easily provoked, think of no evil. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, they shall vanish away. Jeremy, will you take this woman, Allison, whom you hold, whom you hold by the hand to be your wedded wife, promising to keep, cherish, and defend her, and to be her faithful and true husband so long as you both shall live? Allison, will you take this man, whom you hold by the, by the hand, to be your wedded husband, promising to adhere unchangeably to him in all life's changes, and to be his loving and true wife till death divide you? I do. You have for each other a ring. This most precious of metal symbolizes that love is the most precious element in your life. The ring has no beginning and no ending, which symbolizes that the love between you will never cease. You place these rings and bond each other fingers as a visible sign of ours, which this day have made you a man. Jeremy, repeat after me. Allison? Allison. This ring is a token of my endless and abiding love. This, token, this ring is a token of my endless and abiding love. Just as this circle is without end, Just as this circle is without end, my love for you is eternal. My love for you is eternal. My love for you. <laughs> Allison. <laughs> Be that to me. Jeremy. Be that to me. Jeremy. This ring is a token of my endless inviting love. This ring is a token of my endless and abiding love. Just as this circle is without end. Just as this circle is without end. My love for you is eternal. My love for you is eternal. In the name, then, of Jesus Christ and before God and these witnesses, I pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let not Mary, put it something. <laughs> You make this place. Now we're all quiet. <laughs>
Holding in your hands over two years of me journaling every day we spent together since our very first trip. I knew somehow you were going to be my greatest adventure, so I wanted to capture every detail. I've been saving these gifts and hoping of giving it to you on our very day. Here we are. Oh, this is every dang day. <laughs> Today. It's just like every That picture right there. Yep. <laughs> That's what did it. What does it say? It was one of his profiles. Oh, I like this picture. <laughs> it's our very first picture. So this is from who? From Kyle. Hopefully you're reading this at the top of a mountain about to get married. Jeremy, I am so happy you found my mom and make her so happy. <laughs> I know she loves you so much. I can tell she does. Hopefully when you get back, you can take me fishing as my new stepdad. Mom, I'm so excited for you to get married to someone you love and makes you as happy as he does. Hang on to him. He's definitely a keeper. I know he makes you happy, so that's what makes me happy. So love you both, Kyle. Well, thank you, Kyle. That yeah, was sweet. <laughs> and yes, I will take you fishing. <laughs> okay, that's Jacob. Dear Dad and Allison, I am sending you lots of love and best wishes on your wedding day. Dad, I'm so glad that you found someone who makes you genu genuinely happy. May today be the beginning of a long, happy life together. You spent so much of your time taking care of others. You deserve happiness. <laughs> More than anyone else I know. <laughs> 